In this video, we're going to learn how to add memory to a Phi data agent. So to quickly recap, an agent comprises a model, some tools, knowledge, and then finally the memory, and that's what we're gonna focus on. Now memory can be keeping track of the chat history, or it can be us telling the agent information about ourselves. So let's use UV, we're gonna run with Phi Data, I have to put it to NumPy 1 26.4. We're gonna give it OpenAI, Y Finance, SQL Alchemy, and then IPython, and we'll launch IPython. We're then gonna import some modules, and we're gonna initialize our agent. So look, it's got a model at the top. We've got some tools, some instructions, and then we're telling it to show us the tool calls that it makes as well. And let's start with our first question. So tell me which of MongoDB and Elasticsearch is a better pick. And you can see it starts off, it makes a bunch of tool calls there to get the stock fundamentals, the analyst recommendations and the current stock price. Let's speed up the generation and then we'll scroll up to the top so we can see what it's generated. So you can see we start off with the fundamentals. If we come down a little bit, we've got analyst recommendations followed by stock prices, analysis, and finally a conclusion. Let's ask another question. So what do you think of Elastic's 52 week highs and lows? Now it already has the data to answer this question from the tool call we made earlier, but let's run it. And you can see it goes off and makes the get stock fundamentals function call again. And then it gives us some analysis about Elastic's highs and lows. Now this is where our first type of memory comes in. We're gonna have the agent remember the chat history so it doesn't have to make unnecessary tool calls. So we'll bring in the SQL agent storage class and then we're gonna update our agent. So we need to make sure we've got add history to messages equals true. Now just having that is enough and it will then remember what we what's in our chat history in memory. But if we close down the agent, it would then be gone away. So what we're gonna also add is a second persistent storage module as well. So it's gonna store it in temp agentstorage.db. Let's ask the Elastic and Mongo question again. Give it a few seconds and it writes up an analysis. And now this is where it gets interesting. We can then ask the Elastic highs and lows question again. And notice this time it doesn't make the function call again because it already has the information required to answer the question. Now there's also another type of memory we can add which is called user memories. We can tell it stuff about ourselves and it will then use that information when answering later questions. So we're gonna import some modules, and again, we'll update our agent. So this time it's memory. So agent memory, we'll tell it we wanna store it in temp agent memory.db. We're then gonna make sure we've got create user memories equals true. Optionally, we can add in update user memories after run equals true, and then we're gonna give ourselves a user ID. And then I'm gonna tell it something about myself. Now this is made up. So my name is Mark and I have the following holdings. So 10,000 of Snowflake, 2,000 of MongoDB and 4,500 of Datadog. Now I found that if I don't have the my name is Mark prefix, it kind of goes off and looks up the holdings straight away and makes all the function calls without actually storing the memory. So that's kind of interesting. I'll be curious to explore that a little bit more. But you see, if we run this, it goes, great, Mark, thanks for sharing your holdings. Here's a summary. We can also call agent.memory.memories and it will show us all the memories that it has. And so you can see in there, it's got the knowledge of my imaginary shareholdings. I wish I had these shareholdings. Now let's ask it, what's the current valuation of my portfolio? And you can see it goes off, makes the get current stock price tool calls for Snowflake, for MongoDB, for Datadog. And then it gives me a summary for each of them of the total value of my holding in each share. And apparently according to this, I've got $2.7 million worth of shares. So if you liked this, you might also like this intro to Phi Data. So have a look at that one next.